My dear brothers and sisters, I would like to dedicate this talk to every individual who was abandoned by their father. I would like to dedicate this talk to every individual who has loved someone in this world, yet for one reason or another was left abandoned. I would, love, I would like to dedicate this talk to every individual who has lost someone to death and they couldn't figure out why. The talk is called, He Who Has No One Has Allah. And I want you to imagine the following situation. You're seven years old and you come from a family that isn't well off. You have many brothers and sisters and your own parents cannot afford to keep you in the house. So they say, go and live with your uncle who is going to take care of you. This uncle of yours, he runs a madrasa for young children. He teaches them tahfidh of the Quran. He's known to be a good and righteous man. You go and live with this uncle and you, he treats you like one of his own children. He loves you and takes care of you. One day, while you're finished the tahfidh class, you're sitting in your room. He comes into the room and he gives you a hug. And that is how it all begins. The next day he comes and he touches you somewhere else. And it becomes more inappropriate, but you're a young child. You don't know what to feel, you don't know what to do. But you know that something is wrong. For four years, this continues. And in fact, it actually gets much, much worse. And excuse me for not using the term, but please understand what I'm trying to say. Things get much, much worse. Finally, when you reach the age of 11, you decide that you can't live like this anymore. You need to tell someone you need to speak out. You go to your parents when you go to visit them. You go to your brothers and sisters, your own blood relatives. You tell them what's going on. And they say, you just have a personal agenda against your uncle. Your uncle runs a tahfid school. He is the imam of the masjid. He's known to be righteous. You just have a personal problem. And they just absolutely ignore everything you have to say. This individual grows up and cannot have a stable relationship. Every relationship they try to have is sabotaged by the lack of trust they can have in any individual. This individual, now let's bring it to reality, is a sister. She wears niqab. Not because she believes it's a religious obligation, but because she believes this is the only way she can live in the world, where she can hide her face and no one can truly know who she is. This sister at the age of 11 tried to commit suicide. She cut her own wrists, yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not allow her to die. This sister at the age of 19 took an overdose of pills Again, she was taken to the hospital and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not allow her to die. And she tried it again, one last time, the third time, saying that perhaps this will be the time where her pain will go away. That was all she wanted. She wanted the pain to be taken away. And that is why she sought out death. She tried to commit suicide one more time. And again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved her once more. She finally decided to get some help and she contacted me. And I thought, at my, I thought to myself at that time, how do you take away this individual's pain? What could I possibly do that I would be able to help this individual? This story became a journey for myself. And as I tried to help this sister, I realized that this wasn't just an individual case. There are people across this world who are living in pain and agony different types of pain, different types of agony. But it always comes down to the same conclusion, that shaitan, somehow or another, finds a way to get the better of them and derails them from the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> يزرع النور في الأرجاء ألحانا هذا التخرج زانا 
كانت منه أفئدة في أرضي تربيتي التعليم تغشانا